My name is Claudia Kenga, aged 18 years. And I'm Rachel Maleko, aged 17. I'm Tony Preston, and we all go to Marysville Caltrack High School. Uh, me and Natasha are in biology currently. I am in the band, and I'm going to districts and swimming, and I was wondering if anybody you know has been affected by leishmaniasis. Hi, my name is Yolanda Wharton, and I'm in Marysville Caltrack as well. I am currently taking chemistry, and part of my life is swimming and band. I was wondering about leishmaniasis. Where does it impact the community the most? I'm Natasha, and I'm in biology, like Tony said. Uh, I was in swim, and I do band. And I was wondering how leishmaniasis is connected to HIV or Hansen's disease, and which is most common. We look forward to getting to know you throughout this project and hearing from you. We are researching. We researched on the disease leishmaniasis, whereby we found out that the disease is caused by a protozoan parasite uh, trans and transmitted by a by a, the fly called sandfly. And the common symptoms of the disease include fever and swollen lymph nodes. Uh, we also saw that uh, the disease can be prevented by sleeping under treated bed nets. Uh, draining stagnant water and also we found that the disease has brought a lot of impact in our community where as many people are suffering from it and the first stage in sexual reproduction is the infective stage this is where the promastigotes or beginning stage of a trypanosomatid are injected into the skin during a blood meal. Later on, the promastigotes are eaten by neutrophils, or white blood cells. The promastigotes are now capable of developing within the macrophages, also known as white blood cells, making this the diagnostic stage. The newly developed amastigotes multiply in various tissues. As soon as another female sandfly ingests the infected macrophages, the mastigotes can then develop even more so in the midgut and the foregut, concluding one life cycle. The result? A quickly infected population. The asexual life cycle is another possibility for developing Leishmania protozoans. This is when blood is transfused from one infected mammal to a non-infected mammal, either by syringe or blood. They can then develop the protozoans and host while more female phyllobotamine sandflies bite, causing a rapid increase of infected people in the population as well. Cutaneous leishmaniasis affects the skin and mucous membranes. Cutaneous leishmaniasis also involves skin sores that usually start at the site of a sandfly bite and is the most common leishmaniasis to occur. This form causes skin sores which develop a few weeks or months after the bite. Sores can change in size and shape over time. They often start as bumps which later can turn into ulcers with the possibility of being covered in a scab. The sores can be very painful due to swollen glands. Cutaneous leishmaniasis has a number of new cases ranging from approximately 0.7 million to 1.2 million annually. Mucosal leishmaniasis is a more severe case of the cutaneous leishmaniasis and is caused by leishmaniasis species found in Africa and the Americas, which affect the nasal, oral, and pharyngeal mucosa, producing a very disabling and mutilating disease. Mucosal leishmaniasis is one of the less common forms. Systemic or visceral leishmaniasis affects the entire body. This form normally occurs two to eight months after a person is bitten by an infected female sandfly, but may take years for any symptoms to be present. This form of leishmaniasis can lead to deadly complications. The parasites are capable of damaging the immune system by decreasing the number of white blood cells as well as destroying several internal organs. Infected people usually have fever, 
weight loss, enlargement of the spleen and liver, and low blood counts. Visceral and cutaneous leishmaniasis mainly affect children and young adults. A dietary lab looks, place to sit and analyze data, and this is where you do all the experiments, there's equipment, everything. And we store all our samples in a freezer, which goes down to minus 20 degrees. And this is where we make our anti thing. And this is Carrie. Carrie is a technician here at IDRI, and she routinely analyzes patient samples and samples from people all around the world for whether they harbor any markers of leishmaniasis. Right now, she's analyzing samples from Bangladesh, which could be asymptomatic for patients or not whether they harbor antibodies to leishmaniasis so that they can then be followed up and treated as needed. She does so by analyzer. These are the samples. She puts them on a plate and then see and then sees with a whole bunch of antibodies whether they light up for markers of leishmaniasis. And then she will use a robot do the assay in the high throughput, which means you can analyze lots of plates and lots of samples at the same time, which is not possible by hand. So this is that is, this is carries equipment and all the things he uses. I spent exact amounts according to the program. 